Well, welcome to this January 3rd, 2014 edition of 545 Live. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden, and I've got the pleasure of taking you through one of my favorite episodes that we do each and every year. It's a special broadcast. It's still 15 minutes long, but we're going to jam pack it with all the best of 2013 as we take a look back at the headline news from this past year. And with that, we'll launch right in and break down the top stories with some fierce competition uh, this year for the 2013 biggest story. Uh, with the state's web-based healthcare barter system, Vermont Health Connect, making its debut uh, in the lives and wallets of many Vermonters. But it's hard to look further than this past August's startling news that Entergy Nuclear, the highly controversial owners of the Vermont Yankee power plant, would be voluntarily closing the doors to the Vernon-based reactor. That was effective quarter four of this coming 2014 year. That they said in their announcement. That means they're walking away from 18 of the 20 years granted the plant by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, despite the state legislature's two year multi million dollar attempts to force the plant's closure following the expiration of the original NRC license in 2012. So, with Entergy closing shop early at VY, where does that leave the thousands of area residents from Wyndham and neighboring counties and states who've spent decades fighting for the plant's shutdown? Not as happy as early reports hypothesized, with Vermont Yankee leaving behind the still somewhat substantial issue of what to do with the plant's leftover radioactive waste. And with the NRC approved but highly controversial concept of safe store now on the table, that's a process that essentially leaves the bulk of the plant's uh, spent fuel entombed for the better part of 60 years before decommissioning is completed. Uh, with that uh, still on the table, there's still plenty of controversy a-brewing. We began our comments today with the Vermont team this morning to deliver this painful news and to answer their questions. They're a dedicated, resilient group of men and women, but today was very clearly a tough day for them and for us. Financial experts may have been predicting it for years, but the employees of Entergy Nuclear Vermont Yankee first learned of the plant's 2014 closure plans early Tuesday morning, with members of the Entergy administration publicly confirming the story that afternoon. Vermont Yankee will remain under the oversight of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission through the remaining operation, plant shutdown, through the fourth quarter of 2014. This was really uh, the last decision that we wanted to make, but we feel like we have thoroughly evaluated all the various scenarios and options, and unfortunately it's painfully clear that this asset is simply not uh, financially viable. Well, as mentioned, Vermont Yankee was our top story of 2013, along with the news outlet WCAX that dubbed it their top story. But it was the number two story for uh, Ann Galloway and VermontDigger.org, who uh, dubbed uh, everything to do with Vermont Health Connect, uh, the state's new online health exchange website, as their number one story. Let's uh, roll into our special on that now. I think the best advice to people is, Figure out what your individual situation is. So how do you do that? If you're comfortable using the internet, what you can do is you plug in the numbers that it asked for in your individual situation and there's different scenarios and you can find out how much it's gonna cost you. There are different reasons why employers provide coverage to their employees. Um, historically, one of the reasons is because it's much more affordable to get it through an employer than to go out on your own. With the Affordable Care Act and with Vermont Health Connect, that's different. All right, we'll move on in the headlines here for our best of 2013 edition of 545 Live and launch into the local headline chart toppers now by hearkening back to a familiar story around the community. The school safety scare, as it was dubbed, wherein vague threats masked to the community by confidentiality policies resulted in increased police presence at the schools, locked door protocols, and indoor recess at schools across the WSESU school district and beyond, bringing us uh, to our conclusion Conclusion of the story, where the documents released by Judge John Wesley detail the individual in question whose threats to, quote, shoot a bunch of kids, coupled with intel that he had attempted to purchase multiple firearms from a neo-Nazi group, led to the individual's committal to the Brattleboro retreat, and it was upon uh, his subsequent release that the district was brought into the loop, and the events we've all uh, become quite familiar with were set into motion. Sometimes it's like, well, if you have some concerns, do something about it. and but there really, there weren't any, um, nothing illegal had occurred. And so, um, but we felt it prudent, you know, because of the, the world in which we live right now. After Sandy Hook, uh, we had been in touch with um, the state police, 
Brattleboro Town Police and the emergency responders and have had several meetings with principals just to review our emergency uh, response plans. It's back to that official YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Brattleboro TV that will head now to uh, check in with our next story. Tally up uh, all the views here and see what uh, you, uh, the viewership out there, uh, picked as your top story with what you clicked on on YouTube when it comes to BCTV. Uh, with the 545 Live aerial coverage of a massive downtown fire that ultimately led to the full demolition of a three and a half story apartment complex on Elliott Street, uh, topping the YouTube hit list this year. That was in October, but it continues to garner views on YouTube or a view right now here as part of 545 Live. BCTV's Roland Boyden reporting for 545 Live on a five alarm fire that broke out in a three and a half story apartment complex on Elliott Street in downtown Brattleboro, drawing departments from Keene, Putney, and other surrounding areas, throwing a plume of smoke over the downtown area that drew bystanders, including 545 Live's Joe Bushy, who gathered footage of the Red Cross and Brattleboro Town Manager Patrick Moreland helping in the evacuation process as displaced residents looked for a place to stay for the night. Speaking of downtown revitalization, the long dormant uh, downtown structure, the Robert H. Gibson River Garden got a second lease on life, or maybe you could call it a second lean on life, as the, this fall the ever-expanding Strolling of the Heifers organization announced they would be purchasing the building from uh, building a better bridal bro in the hopes of turning it into a downtown agriculture epicenter, complete with kitchen, concert stage, and vendor booths, something that drew 545 Live to the downtown structure once again for the Heifers' uh, first official day as owner. BABB and Strolling of the Heifers are going to continue working together. We're not separating. And that's part of the agreement. Um, and I think it's also a reason why we were chosen to be the next stewards. Um, so we're going to be, because we're all working for Brawlboro. And uh, there's a very close connection between Strolling of the Heifers and BABB. And we're going to do um, many things. Uh, that will help each organization. Next up in our 2013 headline showstoppers, uh, we also saw the departure of one of Brattleboro's biggest assets this year, longtime town manager and expert storm weatherer Barb Sondag, who announced this past June that she would be vacating her position, opening up uh, not just the town's top post, but the debate over the nature of that post itself, with the summer buzz story centered on the possibility of Brattleboro adopting a mayoral position. You have to look at it in terms of what's going on in the world you live right now. It's no secret that Brattleboro's penchant for controversy adds its own set of requisites to the position of town manager. There really are a lot of people who, who um, keep up with what's happening in the town. But for Barb Sondag, the municipality's reigning chief for the last seven years, the ante has been even higher. With a historic downtown fire, tropical storm and flood, an extra dose of lawsuits and budget brujas checkering her tenure, it should perhaps come as less of a surprise than it did to the community when Sondag announced she would be calling it quits on her remarkable run as one of the town's most respected managers. It was that story at Representative Town Meeting this past fall in 2013 that allowed our hardworking BCTV intern Zeb Hathaway to tackle the Nelson Withington skating rink compressor story. He did that full special uh, and it was followed up uh, this at the end of the summer by a select board decision to uh, put on a quote band-aid measure applying $30,000 to the problem uh, in lieu of the $700,000 uh, that was uh, one of the figures brought up at town meeting. All right, uh, we'll move on in the stories now here. Again, it's our best of 2013 edition of 545 Live. So we take a look back uh, at this here year and continue with uh, more budget items on the list here as area organizations relying on government funding may not be quite ready to roll out the 2013 scrapbooking just yet, as this year's enormous news that politics in Washington had reached new levels of inertia, culminating in the shutdown of the federal government at large. That's a self-imposed but arguably right-wing exploited concept of counter-spending that saw the federal funds for local groups like the Brattleboro Housing Authority, many in the school system, and oh, so many others, uh, all brought into jeopardy. 
something Vermont's own U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders was none too happy to see happening on his watch in Washington as he begged adversaries of federal health care reform to take their fight elsewhere rather than resorting to what he called, quote, holding the American people hostage. Like every other American, these federal employees have mortgage payments to make, they have car payments to make, they have college loans to pay off, they have to pay off all of their basic needs like every other human being, and they're sitting there at home or sometimes at work and they're wondering, how am I going to do this? All right, and before we wrap up our best of 2013 edition of 545 Live, we'll uh, take a look outside of Brattleboro. That's right, the BN BCTV does stand for Brattleboro, but there's actually seven other towns that BCTV serves in the surrounding community, including Vernon, Guilford, Demerson, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica. And we cover select board meetings in every one of those towns, as well as a Leland and Gray school board meeting. And there is plenty of news in each and every one of those. Back into the best of 2013, we go now with our uh, year-long seven-town summary report. Started in Demerston, where a proposed gravel pit from Renaud Brothers tops the story index in that town, followed by a heated DRB-based drama in Demerston as well, as the town's Development Review Board Chair Herb Rest was publicly passed up for reappointment this year after the DRB uh, open meeting practices came under fire following their public rejection of one area couple's application for the addition of a swimming pool on their own private property. I think this board has bullied us. I think you basically call the names and run away. I don't think it was intentional, but I think that's happened. And continuing in our seven-town summary, we'll move on to Putney, where a year-long story centered around continued conflict between town residents over the proper discipline of privately owned dogs in the public arena continued, something that brought the town's pet ordinances under fire, only to have the municipality's animal control officer, Henry Farnham, cite them as some of the best-written policies in the state, policies that were simply, in his opinion, under-enforced. You are not required by the ordinance nor by state law to restrain your dog as long as it's on your property. The problem comes when it enters a public highway. That's where the violation starts. So for joggers, runners, bicyclists, or whatnot, it's a dangerous fine line. You know, is that dog going to stop when he gets to the end of the driveway or am I about to get attacked? And to close out our seven town summary, or STS as I'll call it, we'll head over to Newfane where 2012's dominant story regarding a proposed AT&T cell phone tower may have faded from the public eye, but the 2011 headline leader, Tropical Storm Irene, remained at the top of the news cycle with the lingering financial impacts of the storm on the Newfane, Williamsville, and South Newfane budget line items refusing to dissipate, something Newfane Select Board Chair John Mack urged residents to begin to accept. During the flood, we did things to make the town whole and now, two and a half years later, we still don't have those, the monies to cover it. And when we did budgeting, we've done a various things to try to resolve it, but the board resisted on a couple of occasions, putting a sufficient money aside to be certain we were okay. And the end result is that right now we are in a difficult position. From there, in our best of 2013, we'll delve into a state house summary with stories that include Vermont's passage of GMO labeling laws, as well as the state-approved lethal medication dispensing system, which now allows terminal Vermont patients suffering from physician-certified levels of crippling pain. Just a brief look at a 2013 year-long retrospective state house summary. Uh, checking in uh, up in Montpelier and down in Washington, D.C. Now, for more on what the state legislature will be up to uh, this year, we'll again check in with BCTV liaison in the state house, Wyndham District for Rep. Mike Merwicki. Mike uh, has been producing the program at Montpelier Connection, which is an interview series conducted via web stream from the State House each year, with in-studio specials continuing in the off-season, something we're looking forward to uh, announcing again this year. All right, uh, I can sense that time has ticked down here on a uh, 2013 retrospective flashback edition of 545 Live. We've jam-packed it all in. We'll be back with another regular episode of 545 Live next week on Comcast Channel 8, Friday, at this here 545 uh, Eastern Time time slot, we'll uh, see the return of BC TV's interactive video calendar in there as well next week. Sum up all the local headlines, get back into our routine, and look ahead to this promising 2014 year. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Have a happy new year. That carries 5-0. The next item on the agenda... It sounds like I'm talking about The next item on the agenda is board assignments.